Muy buenos días, buenas tardes. Good morning, good afternoon. Welcome all to this new seminar of the Pan American Health Organization Strategies, Tools and Challenges in the Implementation and Buildup of Human Milk Banks in Latin America and the Caribbean. Before starting with our seminar, some brief comments. This seminar is being recorded and you may access the language of your choice because we have simultaneous interpretation into Spanish, English and Portuguese. If you select the globe in the lower bar, you may choose the language you prefer. Uh, we want to let you know that this webinar uh, has interpretation in three languages, Spanish, English, and Portuguese, Portuguese, and you can select the language of your preference by clicking on the icon on the bottom of the screen uh, under the, the title of interpretation. Uh, dando entonces comienzo a este seminario. So starting now with our seminar and giving you a welcome once again. I'm Pablo Zulan, Regional Advisor in Perinatal Health for PAHO WHO with uh, headquarters in CLAP. And I will now to hand the floor to Dr. Suzanne Ferruja, Director of CLAP, who will give the welcoming words. Thank you, Pablo. Good morning, everybody. This meeting is extremely important. We will discuss how to improve feeding and development of newborns. And we're precisely very close, close to eight years for us to have to reach or meet the goals we agreed on as governments and as agencies in relation to the sustainable development goals. These are articulated and they have been thought of for a development that is articulated and mainly sustainable. And for this, we need strategies and tools to respond appropriately. At present, we're going to discuss two of the main SDGs. First, number two, that is what we call zero hunger, that everybody have food safety and therefore nutrition in newborns is present there as a specific goal where we consider the ending of all manners of malnutrition. On the other hand, closely related to this, we have ODS-3, sorry, SDG, Three, regarding newborn mortality. And we know that 
This is partly related in a significant way to prematurity that oftentimes is including uh, premature children's uh, malnourishment. So we will discuss how this agenda and the PACO frameworks in the regional or specific action plans in relation to women and children and adolescents health are important with these two topics. And there is a very special commitment in the Latin American Gerontology Center and in the nutrition unit with the more vulnerable populations. So what we discuss is how via the existing mechanisms we may meet these indicators and we need to discuss equity and the protection of the more vulnerable. AHO, as you are well aware, is the technical secretariat for countries. And we have several commitments within these agendas and the documents just mentioned. Those are the frameworks providing the possibility for agreement among countries in relation to what we call priority strategies. And that is first something that we uh, work on every day and that is the translation of the generation of good evidence. We live in a world with a lot of information, but good evidence is something that requires special work every day to make it uh, available to the decision makers. We also have a significant number of tools that are useful for surveillance and monitoring and assessment. We know that all policies require a constant assessment. And this is part and parcel of any policy and strategy we implement. We need to assess. And there is a lot of very important material in today's topic both informative, educational, and communicational. Training uh, human uh, resources for health is something that we believe is a priority strategy in our organization and for each of the countries. In this set, maybe you could include the QR code we have in CAP. We have developed some tools that may contribute uh, to help uh, health staff, mothers. Well, babies don't use a mobile phone, but to have this possibility of being more aware about these topics. And it is in this framework to enable further participation from professionals and women. Well, we have the opportunity today of listening to one of the most important partners, a collaborating center in Brazil specialized in milk banks. We're going to hear the director, Dr. Prisha, and also being able to understand how in each of the countries we will be able to strengthen this strategy. We consider this meeting as a further opportunity to hold the necessary discussion we want in Latin America and the Caribbean that is regarding the progress to be made, the challenges to be met to guarantee a healthy and fair development to all newborns. I hope you enjoy it. I'll be with you throughout the meeting and at the end we will debate and have questions and try to hear from all of you how we may advance. So, 
I want to thank you all beforehand for being here with us. We will have this link available to be shared with colleagues and all the lecturers we have with us today. Thank you, Pablo. I hand you the floor once again. Thank you, Dr. Siruja. So after uh, hearing uh, about the framework provided by Dr. Siruja regarding the importance of nutrition, feeding, and breastfeeding in the early stages of life within the framework of the SDGs and others, we also wish to frame this activity, and that was your general idea, in the context of the celebration. It's the end of August, it's the month, as you are all well aware, that during this month, and particularly during what we know as maternal uh, breastfeeding or nursing week, we need to approach, strengthen, and promote breastfeeding and human milk that we know is a manner that will allow the care and good nourishment and from the rights perspective, a fundamental approach to contribute towards the health and nutrition, not only throughout the perinatal period, but throughout the life course. We're clearly aware and we have unfortunately observed the impact of the COVID-19 pandemic that had an influence not only on the in health of the population, but also uh, to the access of health and essential interventions. Before the pandemic, we were aware of the major challenges regarding the onset and uh, maintenance of breastfeeding. Close to half newborns are not fed with human milk in the first hour of life, and the pandemic in, meant or entailed significant challenges impacting on nutritional aspects and health. This is why we believe together with the colleagues at the nutrition unit in Pajo, and we're particularly grateful for having Dr. Audrey Morris, advisor in feeding and nutrition in Pajo. Dr. Morris is responsible within this nutrition unit and she'll tell us about her experience and general guidelines in PAHO regarding the approach of breastfeeding, its challenges, and the healthy onset with the promotion of breastfeeding. We know that these pre existing challenges before the pandemic have worsened with it. And in the case of premature newborns or uh, for gestational age, the challenge is greater and likewise its maintenance. And as Dr. Saruja said, in PAHO, we have recently established the National uh, Women's Health Institute, Fernanda Filgueira, from the Osvaldo Cruz foundation with the aim of strengthening milk banks. Now, after the introduction, we will have Dr. Morris and then a presentation by Dr. Joao Abrigio, who will share the specific guidelines being elaborated in this collaboration between the foundation and for creation, implementation and creation of the human milk bank strategy. So after introducing our dear distinguished colleagues who will make their presentations without further ado, I hand the floor to Dr. Audrey Morris. The floor is yours. Thank you very much. I'm very happy to be here to share with um, you had co as colleagues and to the wider audience um, this presentation this morning so let me first of all share the presentation i'll share my screen
Okay, thank you. All right, so I will be making a presentation on the challenges of initiating breastfeeding and supporting mothers to overcome these challenges. In this presentation, we're going to look at how a mother can start out right. What is the current situation? What are some of the barriers and missed opportunities? How can we clear the path for breastfeeding? And finally, we look at care of the small, sick, and preterm infant. Now, Smith et al. carried out a systematic review and meta-analysis in relation to delayed breastfeeding initiation and infant survival. This review included meta-analysis of five studies from four countries and more than 130,000 breastfed newborns. Now in this review, they found this meta-analysis, they found that, Newborns who were breastfed two to 23 hours after birth had one to three times more risk of dying than those who were breastfed within one hour of birth. Additionally, newborns breastfed 24 hours or more after birth had more than two times the risk of dying in relation to those breastfed within one hour after birth. Now, the protective effect of early breastfeeding was independent of exclusive breastfeeding. The authors also highlighted that a study in Tanzania found there was a higher risk of respiratory infections when there was late initiation of breastfeeding. The UNICEF Global Databases of 2018 reported that about 78 million newborns had to wait more than one hour to be put to the breast. The practice, the actual percentage of newborns put to the breast within one hour, as is recommended by PAHO and WHO, was 42% globally. But there was a variation between 32% for the East Asia, for East Asia and Pacific up to 65% for Eastern and Southern Africa. For Latin America and the Caribbean, this is 52%. So 52% of babies being put to the, uh, who had to wait more than an hour before being, um, sorry, 52%, uh, let me get that right, who were put to the breast within an hour. The map shows the, the, in, in color, the situation in the different countries in the region. So with the green corresponding to 60 to 79%, and we see only a few countries there highlighted in this region. An analysis of the barriers and missed opportunities for practicing early initiation of breastfeeding found that the main issues are, first of all, outdated practices in health facilities. So there is separation of mother and mothers and infants, which as we know, this is not recommended. We um, support mothers and infants being kept together at all times. There's also a lack of knowledge about breastfeeding post C-section. There's also cultural practices that result in feeding babies other fluids or foods rather than breast milk. And also the fact that skilled birth attendants are not appropriately being trained on breastfeeding. So the graphic that you see reflects the fact that early initiation rates have only improved significantly among the group of countries with a large increase in institutional deliveries. Here we see also sorry, that in nearly every country, early initiation rates are significantly lower among newborns delivered by C-sections, okay? So the green, um, 
as you see from the green there, the early initiation rates are only among those who are delivered by C-section. Not delivered by C-section, sorry. Now this graphic shows the effects of, uh, sorry. I missed one there. Right. Um, I'll continue to say that the graphic shows the effect of cultural practices where early initial initiation rates are nearly twice as high among newborns who receive only breast milk compared with newborns who receive milk-based supplemental feeds in the first three days of life. So the green cost corresponds to newborns receiving breast milk only. And these are in the higher percentage of higher in of um, early initiation. The blue corresponds to use of non-milk-based liquids, and the pink is the milk-based supplements, formula, and animal milk. So this corresponds to the lowest percentage of early initiation. Now to continue, the baby-friendly hospital initiative is key to clearing the, the path for breastfeeding. Perez Escamilla et al. made a systematic review about the impact of the BFHI on uh, breastfeeding and child health. And that systematic review included 19 countries and found that adherence to the 10 steps to successful breastfeeding in facilities can increase breastfeeding rates, including the early initiation of breastfeeding. Bere Schweitel made another systematic review about interventions to improve breastfeeding. And this review included program and policy related factors. Now they concluded that a combination of interventions had the greatest impact on the early initiation of breastfeeding, leading to a significant 85% increase in breastfeeding rates. So what is necessary? To promote breastfeeding optimally in an expectant or nursing mother, support should be provided throughout the continuum in multiple settings. So increasing community awareness regarding breastfeeding, followed by the hospital or health system support through the BFHI approach and home and family support through counseling. Now counseling by peers or health personnel, baby friendly hospital support and community mobilization are the key interventions to promote optimal breastfeeding practices. They recommend a multidimensional approach to strengthen breastfeeding interventions. They also indicate that a strong political will is necessary. So there needs to be advocacy and championship by health ministries at both national and uh, subnational levels. There needs to be ongoing monitoring and evaluation and uh, all of this is necessary if we are to meet the global targets and the SDG targets that were mentioned before. Let's look at care of the small, sick, and preterm infants. Um, so WHO and UNICEF in 2020 released a publication about the Baby Friendly Hospital Initiative for these babies for small, sick and preterm infants. And it's well known that these babies are at increased risk of early growth retardation, infectious disease, developmental delay, and also there's a higher risk of death during infancy and childhood. Now, human milk and breastfeeding are extremely important to reduce morbidity and mortality and support the best possible growth, development, and overall outcome for these babies. The current WHO guidelines and implementation guidance, um, implementation guidance state that all infants, including small, sick, and or preterm infants should be fed human milk. So that's the recommendation. 
And if the mother's own milk is unavailable or contraindicated, safe donor human milk from a human milk bank will be the feeding of choice for these infants. The publication that I mentioned indicates that the that systematic reviews which were performed have demonstrated the importance of professional and peer support, also skin-to-skin -skin care, rooming in, counseling, and support to initiate and maintain the milk supply. There is also um, some advantage of oropharyngeal colostrum early in the hospital course and the use of donor human milk banks. So WHO recommends these donor human milk banks for low and very low birth weight infants small and sick newborns who cannot be fed their own mother's milk. And they say that the safe, human, the safe donor human milk should come from a milk bank with standards and procedures to ensure um, sustainability, safety, ethics, and appropriate clinical use. Now these services should be integrated components of care for small and sick newborns to support lactation and, um, and breastfeeding. So what are the overall recommendations? First of all, ensure the right start for all infants. Secondly, fully implement the International Code of Marketing of Breast Milk Substitutes and the relevant World Health Assembly resolutions. And uh, um, as we have previously presented, and um, um, there was a report earlier this year, there needs to be more done in the countries of the region in implementing national implementation of the international code of marketing of breast milk substitutes. There needs to be enhanced quality of care in facilities. So as recommended, immediate skin to skin contact at right after birth, the early initiation of breastfeeding and the other evidence-based recommendations which make up the 10 steps to successful breastfeeding on which the baby-friendly hospital initiative, um, the BFHI is based. The 10 steps can all be applied in the case of small, sick and preterm infants. And as mentioned, there's a publication outlining how the 10 steps, the BFHI, can be applied for these um, small infants. Prove, improved access to skilled breastfeeding counseling for all mothers and improved access to donor human milk for small, sick, and preterm infants. And thank you very much for listening. Muchas gracias. Thank you, Dr. Morris. Excellent. And the very significant challenges and how this strategy of human milk banks and donors enable uh, responding in the specific case of preterm, small and sick infants. We have now time for questions where you may present your questions and comments that we will approach after the two presentations. And precisely, one of the important aspects that PAHO and uh, WHO present is summarized in this video we will now share regarding the importance of care and in marketing of human milk substitutes. So before Dr. Prigio's presentation, we'll share this video. Please, can we see the video?
Muy bien, muchas gracias. Y, y ahora entonces, siguiendo con, con, con la agenda del, del seminario y en virtud de los desafíos que la doctora Mori nos ha compartido, quisiéramos dar la palabra al doctor Joao Aprillo, quien va a compartir desde la experiencia del Centro Colaborador y del trabajo que vienen realizando eh, los lineamientos y, y abordajes específicos para establecer, implementar y evaluar la estrategia de strengthen policies and actions conducted in the countries in the region and health centers. Xiao, the floor is yours. Thank you. Good morning, everybody. Special greetings to Dr. Suzanne Serugia. I thank Apple and Dr. Audrey Morris and Dr. Pablo Duran for allowing me to have this opportunity to share discussion together with you. It's a very important subject. I will share my screen. This idea of extending the knowledge and generate spaces and opportunities to extend the exchange of knowledge and practices regarding maternal breastfeeding is essential to reach our commitments with the SDG agenda. So now I will discuss this subject with a very general view about what we're building together at the Fiocruz Institute in together with Latin American Perinatology Center to work with the human milk banks in Latin America and the Caribbean. These are four items I will share regarding the history, the challenges at present. We have solved many things, but there is much to be done. We have strategic goals and the sort of initial strategy we propose to begin to work. I'm not going to tell you much of the history, but tell you that Latin America and the Caribbean fortunately have a long history. We have done a lot to strengthen our institutions at the Fiocruz, and we have provided total support uh, and have a lot of support from PAHO in 2004, we had the first uh, meeting of Latin American countries to try to strengthen a joint action to establish human milk banks in our Latin American countries. The second important step was two years later, in 2007, we had very positive outcomes in our countries in South America. Two heads of government in Idea America proposed the creation of an Idea American Human Milk Bank program in 2007. And in 2010, we were discussing our actions bearing in mind greater guidelines for global health with the SDGs. In 2015, the goals changed from ODM, uh, SDM to SDG, and we had 30 countries together, PAHO and WHO, to adapt, to work with the goals mentioned by Dr. Saroja, but adding another specific goal, and that was number seven, speaking of joining efforts and strengthening institutions because cooperation uh, was essential. The milk banks in Latin America and the Caribbean already in 2015 had many initiatives among the Central American, Caribbean, Latin American countries, and we 
began to work with African countries and all this was extremely positive. If we consider human milk banks as a strategy of improving neonatal care in relation to uh, nutritional safety. So from this standpoint, we initiated a coordinated action together with the countries. We were debating how to make progress, how to plan, how to envisage all this, particularly considering uh, the objectives number three and 17, imagining that human milk is more than a foodstuff, more than a medication. It's a functional food that cannot be achieved with any other industrialized product. So how to work? not only to preserve human milk, but to preserve human milk, preserving the nutritional value and others, the defense factors, the microbioma, and all the other characteristics. And from this standpoint, to meet this goal, it would be fundamental that each human milk bank in North America behave as a support for maternal uh, breastfeeding, that each milk bank be empowered with important issues of global health policy, uh, child-friendly hospitals with a marketing code for substitutes with a very strong manner of imagining that our commitment be ensuring a healthy life and promotion of well-being for all. Uh, continuing work with our networks to strengthen the mechanisms to implement an increasingly strong alliance for global development to have a truly sustainable process. This is an extremely important framework in the history of our human milk banks in America and the Caribbean. We have this possibility and opportunity to, since last year, work directly with a PAHO health team coordinated by CLAP with a view to be a reference for human banks in Brazil because we have experience in supporting people in other countries in relation to this activity and work in tune with the PAHO proposal. Here we highlight very important challenges we must face because we have to say we have to try to support our health system to reach the SDGs. That's extremely important. We still have a task before us and it's extremely complex. We must answer three basic issues already mentioned by doctors Audrey and Pablo, how to plan, how to monitor, and how to assess, how to provide support to our Latin American countries and member states of this great Latin America and Caribbean community to continue with this proposal that milk banks truly become a strategy to improve care in terms of moving forward in relation to the SDGs, as mentioned. We try to start with a discussion we wish to extend together with other countries that are partners in this task. 
ideas to make these goals operational. In the first matrix, we're trying to discuss in SDG 3, the two goals 3.2 and 3.4, that are the goals that we believe could receive more direct support and in a more effective manner. And seeking within these goals, how to try to reduce morbid mortality in newborns with an emphasis in the neonatal component and small, low weight, preterm newborns that come to this world need special, that need special neonatal care. So with this emphasis, we are seeking to comply with goal 3.2. Regarding 3.4, we believe that working in this perspective we are providing a supplementary strategy that is of utmost importance to support prevention actions regarding the prevention of uh, non-transmissible chronic diseases uh, to promote mental health and well-being. We work hard to have human milk in the different facilities uh, and a special department for breastfeeding. And there we have also SDG 17 to strengthen the global alliances, sharing knowledge and expertise among our countries regarding technologies for the promotion of breastfeeding in the third level of care and guaranteeing access to mother's milk as a fundamental human right. The right for all, not only to have human milk, but quality and certified human milk. And when we speak of human milk for preterm, infants, we have to be more specific as compared to human milk for a working mother. From this standpoint, we make several uh, proposals in this work plan and in terms of reference as a collaborating center, and we'll discuss them now. From this standpoint, we work with four goals for strategic goals. The idea is one, to develop opportunities and sharing of knowledge and technologies about human milk tanks in the promotion of breastfeeding in third level of care and how we may enhance the uh, friendly hospitals for mothers how milk banks may provide support to public policies for breastfeeding in uh, health systems in our countries. Two, indeed, gather and make available technical data documents and scientific evidence so milk banks may advance and expand and consolidate in a safe way. Three, to seek the development of tools for surveillance, monitoring, and assessments of human milk products. And last, our fourth strategic goal is to do, conduct professional training activities with the prospect of promoting empowering of human uh, health systems in our countries with a view to develop local competences for them to be independent. So with these four goals, with these four strategic goals that are our four major guidelines in this work plan, we will now share some preliminary outcomes after we started working last year, We're showing some interesting things. Item one, the discussion and introduction, although we don't have much time for this, 
We will try to extend and discuss this with Paco to know the real validity of this document, that is the uh, requirements for good practices in human milk banks in our countries. These requirements include a series of concepts and fundamental principles of great importance, such as in terms of guaranteeing quality and using a quality control system based on age, uh, CCP, uh, critical control uh, systems, and it should be very low cost, low cost, but high security level, because in this way, in, in Rio de Janeiro, in the Rio Cruz laboratory with all the different laboratories and quality control systems, but with moderate low cost technologies that may be used safely within the institute, but throughout the milk banks in the country and in the Latin America and the Caribbean. In line with this, the Fernandez Figueira Institute is committed together with PAP and PAHO of providing two products that are two initiatives rather of great importance, that is providing all with a professional optimization course on the quality control of human milk so that I may enable our children that have special needs may receive mother's milk as uh, required by each and also providing uh, technical counseling to countries in the process of implementation, monitoring and assessment of human milk banks in coordination with the PAHO offices and the corresponding countries as coordinated by PAP. The other objective, well, this is something that we believe is extremely important. It developed a collaborative study uh, that is descriptive regarding the regulations of human milk banks in countries in Latin America and the Caribbean. Apart from everything we may bring uh, regarding innovation and progress of scientific knowledge, what is happening with our partners in Latin America and the Caribbean in relation to human milk banks. The proposal is to conduct a collaborative study, a descriptive study together with all the countries to know about their practices, challenges, documents, uh, reference, working methodologies, preferences, uh, standards, that is to know what is occurring in our region so that we can begin to work hard in training and with great participation in relation to this commitment of SDG 17. This working perspective will enable us to be clear about how to strengthen our collaboration among our countries, the exchange of knowledge, extension of spaces, sharing as anticipated in our document with our original proposal for the Collaborating Center for Human Milk Health. Another important issue regards the other strategic goal that is the issue of data data are essential i need a reliable information system and i also need to work with a milk bank in the fernando Figueres institute and know 
how they're managing all this, how much milk is being collected, what is a minimum to be demanded, how many mothers can I support in breastfeeding within my human milk bank department and the outpatient clinic supporting mothers with difficulties with all of major issues that have a need to receive support in order to continue breastfeeding. I'm not speaking of donor mothers, and although I'm speaking of human milk bank in Brazil, according to our experience, ultimately it's basically support. We need to have open doors for all ladies needing support to continue to maintain the process to overcome smaller or major hurdles. This assessment of ladies is there, so we must know that the director must be aware of this, so the Minister of Health in the region is aware of this. Uh, the Ministry of Health in Brazil, for example, is our secretariat uh, for primary care that is involved, perinatal health. We must know where to invest more following this time. And we have uh, an experience that began to be built in 2019. And we continue in 2020, 2021. These are monthly updates where we may conduct certifications. And this can produce very interesting things such as periodical balances, uh, reports in a summary way as shown. Well, it's in very small type, but there's some human figures showing in dark blue and in a lighter color. That, for example, since in the 2021 period, the proportion of ladies receiving support in this outpatient clinic network in the third level of care for milk bank and donor ladies. So we speak of this ratio that is one donor for 11 mothers, 11. This is information that is extremely helpful when reaching decisions at different levels of complexity. This is what we wanted to share. And more practical examples now. We have four graphs. I'm not going to ask you to look at them in detail, but they are important. This is an initiative developed at Fiocruz for our human milk banks. And here we may see how to continue following the uh, milk behavior, milk collected, produce the children that benefit from human milk monthly. So we can establish comparisons of the behavior, for example, June, June 2022, and what occurred in June last year, or in an automatic manner. This is a monitoring information system. Here I can have the data of July 2021. This corresponds to the Human Milk Bank Network in Brazil. At the meeting we had for the different milk banks in 2015, we changed the name and called it the Human Milk Bank a network, it isn't an NGO or an association, just a name we gave at this meeting. And for example, we had human milk handed to small preterm babies in July 2021. We managed to collect 
1,835 liters of human milk in July alone. It seems a large figure, but what does it mean to have 14,835 liters? Our historical mean for July was 9,722 liters of milk. So we can establish this comparison in terms of the prior month. And this is interesting because ultimately there was a growth in the mean of the historical series of July. But if I compare directly 2022 with July 2021, I see a fall of 7.67%. So important guidelines we wish to share and provide and generate opportunities for exchange with the rest of Latin America. This is the online learning environment where we provide courses and share initiatives regarding human milk plants and the actions, for example, our major goal is to try to include three topics that are very valuable for us in Latin America. The quality control process in courts, that's the first. With a, an update for professionals, an optimization management of information in human milk banks where people learn to manage data and indicators to know how to do what we can with this information system. That is our standpoint. And then the online community regarding uh, mothering, mothering, that is how should we conduct this interrelation from the third level of care where we are with the milk banks and the reference network in the first level of care. So from this standpoint, we have all these screens that have been validated in Portuguese. We're currently conducting a course with close to 1,500 professionals in Brazil that are taking this course of quality control and processing. And in Portuguese, we also have close to 50 professionals in the implementation of the second milk bank in the island of Santiago in Cape Verde. And at present, we're about to end this final stage of providing these matters in Spanish, that is for CLAP and an assessment for CAP and PAHO to begin with this commitment as a collaborating center with PAHO and begin to share this process also. Another important aspect we have discussed with friends is how to try to uh, advance in this field, how to extend knowledge and debate. A preliminary proposal was trying to discuss this according to specificities due to different matters at formal level uh, that could be sub-regional also and working, for example, with regions and sharing. In the Pan-Amazonic region, we have the different countries belonging to the Amazon, Brazil, with the different departments and their own experience, trying then to conduct studies and post discussions and have a forum to share these experiences. And the same would occur with Central America, the Caribbean, and Mexico together. And in the southern tip of Latin America, the southern cone, because, for example, in the southern cone, there are some matters that are very specific 
Brazil, Paraguay, Argentina, Paraguay, Brazil, and then some issues the same as in the Palm Amazon region because there are specific cultural aspects that we believe must be known and shared. For example, I could tell you what occurred with Guatemala when we visited uh, from Antigua and our friend Soto Neonatologist responsible for the neonatal initiative in the Antigua hospital. And then we observed when we conducted this assessment of kilocalories of the human milk collected had a calorie value of close to 1,200 kilocalories. And uh, the question was, why was it so high? Surely there was a mistake. And then discussing this with professionals at the nutritional level in the hospital and groups of mothers, we realized that there was a cultural matter whereby mothers you at the seed with a long chain polyunsaturated parts. And we discovered that. So there are many cultural issues we must acknowledge. Well, that in summary, and um, very briefly, I apologize for any mistake and not clarifying enough. This is what I had to share with you at our uh, collaborating reference center. These are our addresses. Thank you all. Excellent. Thank you, Dr. Acrisio. And once again, as stated at first, we're working hard with the collaborating center so that parting from the experience in the region, we may elaborate a series of guidelines and technical documents but in countries where they do not have countries or health departments where they don't have milk banks or uh, milk bank networks in Paho and together with a collaborating center we will contribute to strengthen them and then uh, respond to the challenges posed by Dr. Morris. Well, thank you then for being present and participating and showing interest. We have received many greetings in the chat. And some questions have arisen. One, for example, from Costa Rica, stating that they're working there in all the maternities in the two first hours following delivery, but they visualize a possible issue and that regards the continuity of breastfeeding after the postpartum leave. So if Dr. Morris wishes to give us any answers in this regard, we would be very grateful. Yes, I will, thank you. So this question brings out, it highlights for us the importance of um, protecting breastfeeding and uh, some of the policies that countries can implement that will help in maternity protection. So um, maternity leave, um, extended maternity leave is one area that we encourage countries uh, to, to um, enact legislation for so that mothers can have an extended time in which they can breastfeed their children. Um, we also would want to see more countries putting in place uh, or more workplaces putting in place policies so that mothers may be able to either breastfeed their child. I mean, if they live near enough, um, they can go home and breastfeed or express us a time to enough time to express breast milk at work and uh, a facility to store it uh, until she reaches home and then she can feed it to her child or it can be left to 
feed the child. Um, uh, but it's something that the mother herself um, can do if she has not, she has had to return to work, she's unable to breastfeed her child directly. But uh, what she could do over the the course of time when she is at home, she can express her milk, and as I mentioned, also express at, at whenever convenient at work or whenever convenient, and leave this for her child to be fed this breast milk while she's not there. Um, we also encourage breastfeeding when she is with the child and that will keep up her milk supply. Both this and the expression will keep up her milk supply um, if she breastfeeds when she's with her baby and especially at night um, to keep her supply going. So those are the recommendations that I would make. But of course, as I said, overall policy is important. It's important for us to let our governments know that this is something that is needed by mothers so that they can um, spend time with their babies and uh, breastfeed them um, for long enough, exclusively breastfeed for long enough and continue to breastfeed. Thank you. Muchas gracias, excelente. Thank you, excellent. Let us then continue with further questions. Now, these are for Dr. Joao. They refer more specifically to milk months. This question, for example, regards what health professionals should champion this sort of projects. Pediatricians and ontologists, nutritionists, nursing staff, and a related question regarding processing of human milk. Question regards if the plan is to lyophilize human milk and if this is a safe procedure. Thank you for this opportunity once again. The professionals we have to champion, well, all physicians, pediatricians, nutritionists, nursing staff, all these professionals would be able to promote and champion this process. So they are all, all very welcome. We cannot discriminate one category from the other or the opposite. It's important to work from this multidisciplinary standpoint, ideally in terms, well, I don't know if that was enough, but in terms of processing, when we speak of lyophilization, we don't have any reason to routinely use this process. This process is too expensive. And the idea is to use a process to remove the water from the milk. And it's important to remind you that it isn't a drying process, but it removes water without heating the product. It's extremely expensive and we use it in the case of vaccines and products we wish to preserve. There is very interesting ongoing research in Brazil and elsewhere trying to conduct human lyophilization to use as an adjunct in the case of low caloric or protein content human milk. When I say low content, I mean special needs for extreme, small, low weight, very low weight and newborns, infants. Because if we speak of infants weighing two kilos, 1800 grams, that we can manage them well. But if we're speaking of a newborn weighing 600, 500 grams with important secondary disorders, small children that can be held in our hands, oftentimes in order to maintain the growth rate as in utero, need a greater protein uh, contribution, but donated human milk is donated by ladies that participate 
in an altruistic and voluntary manner. So when we look at the content of calories and proteins in this milk, we find great variability. And thus, for example, when the mother is breastfeeding, the milk that pours from the other breast has a calorie content of close to 450-500 kilocalories and an immunological content of 700-750 milligrams percent of a secretory IgA. This isn't a foodstuff. We should gather this milk in a differential manner to use it as an immunological supplement for small infants that are being fed, for example, 600 grams in the intensive neonatal care unit with issues as septic enterocolitis and things of the sort. So we must be aware of this. And in the case of this, these children using increased protein or calorie content with lyophilized milk could be a very interesting solution as compared to special formulas for newborn because of all that we know about the uh, benefits of uh, human milk. Thank you, Joao. Well, indeed, we also have further comments, for example, from Chile, in the Maure region where they state interest, and surely this will be shared by many more colleagues, this interest in establishing a human milk bank, and the recommendations and suggestions are that via their health uh, facility or hospital authorities address this request to the PAHO office in their own countries and via this mechanism, the technical team and Dr. Morris at the nutrition department in, and in club, we will respond to these requirements. There are some questions. Well, Dr. Aprigio has already answered this, but which are the most effective strategies to obtain human milk donations? How many milk banks are there in Brazil? Uh, people from El Salvador are asking. And well, basically that. There are many more queries, of course, but that people mostly uh, are thanking us for the event. Joao, the floor is yours. Okay, Pablo. I will also add that the countries that have human milk banks may and must use the mechanism mentioned by Pablo to encourage uh, others. It's very nice to have the people from El Salvador. And it's important to have these collection centers and milk banks. But the best strategy is to encourage maternal breastfeeding always. Without it, we won't have donors. We won't have any communicational strategy in the, to guarantee donations. And it's important to remind people that ultimately, speaking of donated milk banks, is an exception. It's just for a transient period. Professionals in our human milk banks must be available to support mothers that experience this transient period to continue with breastfeeding. That is the first thing, to have good strategies and policies to promote breastfeeding in the region. Two, establishing communication channels that are effective for the individual populations, for their own people, for their environment, for their professionals. And this communication must be based on clear, direct, and objective strategies of easy access, providing support with educational material, 
uh, from this standpoint. Okay. Good, thank you. Well, now to wrap up this seminar, I'm going to ask, ask Dr. Morris if she wants to add on any final comments, recommendations, suggestions to close, and then we'll hand the floor to Dr. Saruja. Um, uh, no, I don't think I have any general comments to make, except that um, right now we are in fact looking at um, whether, there, whether we can provide some funding for some of the equipment that is needed in the very short term by um, some of our member countries. So that is one thing that um, we have been reaching out to countries with um, to let us know your needs and how we can assist with funding for human milk banking, you know, and this is very short term funds. So um, I'm still encouraging responses, although we had a deadline on that, but um, let us know at PAHO how we can help with that. Um, and uh, as, as I mentioned before, we have to keep in our countries, um, keep in mind that we, we, we try to implement the, all the 10 steps for all babies um, so that they can be well fed. And this, um, it is new to some persons that we should also be really promoting this for preterm and small babies. But human milk banking is very important in this type of activity. And uh, together we work as PAHO, all our different departments in working with countries to see how we can best assist in getting this type of implementation. Thank you. Muchas gracias. Thank you, Dr. Audrey. And subscribing to what she said, we invite you to contact the PAHO offices in the individual countries for to request technical cooperation, guidance, and guidelines, and for short term funding that may, in some cases, contribute or help to the establishment and equipment of the human milk banks. We have some questions regarding how to access the training courses or the technical guidelines. We're working on a bulletin after this seminar that we will share through our CLAP PAHO communication services and for all those participating and registered in the seminar will receive them through email. So once again, for being with us and showing interest, on I, I now hand the floor to Dr. Saruja for the closing words. The floor is yours, Suzanne. Thank you. Thank you, Paolo. I want to start with two things mentioned at the end by Joao Aprigio and Audrey Morris. First, our first action must always be to strengthen breastfeeding. No relationship is more important and strong. And we have thousands of evidence. We increasingly accumulate evidence regarding the importance of breastfeeding in the development of newborns. Not only then, but for their lifetime. This is an asset received in the most natural way. I was fortunate to have a mother who rest me a month, nearly a year. And I think that this is something that is very medicalized right now. You must discuss this in your different regions. There is much uh, involved there but we have to strengthen this as our first step. Of course, not everybody is fortunate to have children capable of receiving direct human milk. And that is why we have the banks. And that's why we have this the whole set of strategies. And now I think what was also discussed maybe 
we need, and this is part of the technical secretary, to further discuss with countries to understand better how to impact on the implementation or the more productive implementation of these strategies and tools by guidelines, courses, or with a cold chain in order to uh, have our milk bank. That's our work to help countries to implement these policies and in this way be able to improve the life and quality of life of infants. Well, now I must thank you all. Thank you so much, Joao. Audrey, Joao, thank you, Pablo. And through him, the whole FAP team working on this, I observed Roberto, Melina, Thais, or the other assistants, Rosina, Magdalena, and also our interpreters. I can see Trini and Marice and Cristina. And I also see our technical assistant, Santiago. Thank you all, the people behind the scenes contributing towards this meeting. But mainly, thank you to all you participants. And as we had over 350 people in the audience, I also monitored the English and Portuguese because we have different channels. Uh, on we see participants in the different languages. Please tell people about this meeting. It's very important. You can share the link uh, for the YouTube uh, recording. We must continue working on this every day. The good information belongs to all. Thank you all. Thank you. Have a good day. Muchas gracias. Vamos a compartir para los que antes de que, de que se... Before leaving, we're going to share QR codes with the SDB app so you can download it if you wish.